this evening we're going to be covering really an update on my personal finances, my business finances, and uh, exposing you to all of the concepts that I share on this YouTube channel. So as you can see in the title, it says debt snowball to velocity banking to infinite banking and to cryptocurrency, which is a bit of a new environment for me. Um, so I want to be able to at least share with you my, my journey, my experience, the things that I do know, what I don't know. And uh, at the end of this video, maybe you'll find value in some of these things that you could probably implement yourself, uh, that you can apply to your own personal or business finances, maybe both. Uh, my goal is to simply reveal to you the process, how I implement all of these things to accelerate debt, whether it's to pay off debt or accumulate good debt, um, or to just simply save money in a more effective way in the 21st century. Okay, that's all I wanna do is show you, and then it's up to you how you wanna apply these different things, all right? No matter where you are at in your financial journey, if you commit, if you make a decision, you will achieve what you want to achieve. It's simply a commitment issue, it's a discipline, you gotta make a decision, and then you seek the knowledge, you seek the information. I'm gonna share with you all the numbers in advance so you have a good idea of what we're gonna be doing this evening, okay? We're gonna, I'm gonna start by sharing my four major numbers. Whenever I work with my clients, that is the first thing I ask them. Every phone call, prior to the call, after the call, what are your four major numbers? What's your income, expenses, debt, and cash flow on a monthly uh, basis, okay? So for me, my current income 2021 is roughly 30K plus, could be higher, usually no less than 30. It's been like that for about the last four to six, almost seven months, consistently with that number. My expenses, have been at roughly 10,000. I may go a little couple hundred dollars more, nothing crazy, but that's been pretty consistent, 10,000 for the last year and a half now, pretty much. Zero debt since 2019, January of 2019. No, I'm sorry, February of 2019, I've been debt free. Cash flow is 20,000 roughly per month, could be higher, depends on, you know, obviously if the income rises. My debt tool for this scenario that I'm sharing with you this evening is going to be a cash value life insurance policy with Guardian. That's the name of the insurance company. The funding amount is $70,000 per year. The base premium expense is $7,000 a year. The split design is a 90-10, which simply means 90% of 70,000 is directed towards cash value. The other 10% is going towards a premium whole life expense, which is the cost of life insurance, the, the base premium. There, is our, there are other costs such as term rider, PUA fee, sales load fee. I don't think I'm missing anything else. But these are the main fees that exist in your common life insurance policy in regards to high cash value life insurance. I'm in my second policy year, okay? So that means I've already paid into this policy $140,000. My anniversary date is June, okay? So it's coming up in about, what, five months? I think my anniversary date is June 16th or June 17th. I forget, but it is the month of June, which means that I will have the opportunity to dump in another $70,000. So that'll be 140, that'll be 210,000 in principle that would have gone into this specific uh, policy. My MEC limit, stands for modified endowment contract. This is a very important number. This number prevents me 
prevents my policy from becoming a modified endowment contract, which simply means uh, the IRS will, will look at it, will look at this asset, will look at this policy, and they will treat it like a 401k, like an investment, which means that I'll be taxed heavily on the money that went into this account, on, on the growth. The objective with all high cash value life insurance policies is to not create a mech. How do you not create a mech? You need mech space, proper design. You have to know, you have to get very educated, you need to be confident, you need to do research, you need to study. Take the time to really dive into this type of tool if you're gonna commit it, if you're going to uh, uh, practice it in your, in your personal finances. But um, one of the main keys is uh, you know, having this mech space from the amount of money that you're, you're essentially putting into the policy. So a good rule of thumb is whatever you fund into a policy, just know that your MEC limit is always going to be higher than what you're paying in, okay? Now, this policy is designed as a seven pay reduced paid up, which simply means that I will be paying into this policy, I'm I'm committing myself. I'm not obligated by any means, but it is a personal commitment that I am committing $70,000 to this one policy for seven years. Okay? For seven years. After seven years, I have the option to do what's called a reduced paid up, or I can continue to simply pay in the base premium seven thousand dollars or i can pay into the policy a max of twenty eight thousand dollars okay now if i wanted to pay in more money right if i wanted to pay in seventy thousand dollars for a longer period of time than seven years my mech limit would have to be higher and based on my age, health, and finances, my premium would also have to be higher. So sometimes a 90-10 split will not make sense. In some cases, depending on the insurance company that we go with, it may not make sense to uh, have such a low premium if you intend to fund a policy for an extremely long period of time, say 25 years and up, maybe 21 years and up. Again, depends on our age, health, and finances. Okay? So that's some good information to know. This is a real policy. It's in play. This is my debt tool. I'm using this debt tool, this, this, this asset class, high cash value life insurance, combining it with my four major numbers to practice Debt snowball, velocity banking, infinite banking, and uh, we're adding cryptocurrency into the equation. Okay, we're in the 21st century. I'm 25 years old, so I know that at some point, at the rate we are moving in, in this world, that cryptocurrency is more than likely going to be a replacement for, I don't have my wallet, it's all the way over there, shoot, for the dollars that you trade all day long. I know these are facts, okay, you can look this up. The money in your wallet has no value. It's all debt, has no value. If something has no value, but you're telling me it's a $100 bill or a $50 bill, $20 bill, $10, $5, $1 bill, quarter, dime, nickel, penny, all these things. If it has no value, that means at some point, it's eventually going to go to its, to its original value, which is what? Zero. Nada. Nothing. Gone. Fini. Finito. That's it. 
it's gonna get removed or replaced by something that has what? Value, okay? That's either going to be gold, silver, cryptocurrencies. These are the store of value when it comes to your money. Another store of value, in my opinion, is debt. Debt. Because money has no value and all money is debt, that now means in the 21st century and even in the 20th century that I, the only way for me to create an abundance of wealth, the only way to maximize my dollars is by multiplying the dollar, by leveraging the dollar. Or else, I'm going to be operating at a certain speed, right? Whereas the wealthy are going to be operating at a much faster speed, more effective with the same dollars, right? So my goal as a 25 year old entering this chaotic environment world that we live in, also a wonderful, beautiful world, all these good, bad ego, you know, egos, uh, good, bad and ugly, everything that's going on, I have to educate myself. I must navigate and decipher facts, right? from false prophecies. I need to identify truth, absolute truth in everything that I do. I need to look at principles in order for my dollars, my money to work effectively in this world. It's not about right and wrong per se. It's more so what is the most effective thing for me in my current state, my current personal finances. This is how I want you to think. For my moms out there, between the ages of 45 and 55 and up, or younger moms, dads, kingdom citizens, how are you operating on a day-to-day? -day? How are you making your dollars more effective? How are you multiplying your dollars in a world where you're operating with currency, fiat currency, that has no value, okay? So let's come back to the board. You saw the four major numbers, you see the debt tool. I wanna share with you my system, okay? I'm gonna go over these little acronyms here as you're taking your notes, okay? You can literally just copy this, okay? So for me, I have an S corporation. I have a business. This money that I get paid for value that I bring into the marketplace by serving and operating in my purpose, people pay me worthless dollars. I've got these worthless dollars here. I have a hundred, I've got two twenties, I have a 50 and two $1 bills, okay? These, this money, it's completely worthless, has no value, but it's what everybody agrees in the world currently to be using. So until that changes, for now, I accept this form of currency in my country, in the United States of America. So people pay me money, right? The minute I receive this money lands into a business checking account, okay? Now, because I'm a business owner, an S corporation, I am going to pay less taxes than your average Joe, right? Average Joe, average Susie that has no business and just a personal checking account. When he or she receives income from their value that they put into the marketplace, Uncle Sam takes a bigger chunk from average Susie and average Joe. Why is that? I don't know. 
I don't have all the answers. What I do know is how the system operates. And that's currently how it operates. If you are an employee, if you work for the man or the woman, okay? If you work for someone else, you're paying the most amount of money in taxes, period. So before you even get your dollars into your checking account, you're already being taxed by your government at the highest rate possible there is, regardless of who is in power. That's how it operates. So by that simple form of information, I said, well, you know what? I'm not an average Joe. I'm a kingdom citizen. I represent the kingdom of heaven here on earth. I'm not an average Joe. I'm not an average Susie, nor should anyone be. I'm a unique individual. There's only one copy of me on planet earth. Out of the seven plus billion people here, there's only one of me. So therefore, I have a business, so I pay less in taxes. So this BC stands for business checking account. People pay me money, lands it to my business checking account. Now I know that the minute that that money that they paid me lands into my account, because it's so worthless, I gotta get rid of it as fast as humanly possible. I have to get rid of it and I have to exchange it for an asset or something that stores value and grows over time. That is key. That is key. If I hold on to this worthless piece of trash for right now, okay, it's the United States of America, the Federal Reserve, that's not federal. The United States of America that hasn't been so united lately, okay? That says the debt is legal tender for all this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. So I got all these people paying me debt. Debt. It lands in my checking account. Because it's a business checking account, I'm going to be paying less in taxes than average Joe and average Susie. Then I figured, well, shoot, because this has no value, I got to get rid of it. I got to exchange it for something else. Okay? Well, there's something called debt. There's something called credit. So the next part of the equation here is this business checking account, the money that sits right here for right now, before I use this worthless trash to live and operate and run my business, before I use that worthless trash, I'm gonna have it sit there for just a minute. And I'm gonna come over here to this CC, my credit card, a business credit card, okay? Now, this business credit card, you got Amex, Discover, Bank of America, all the banking institutions, credit card companies, okay? Credit, credit. This credit card is being used to pay all of my business expenses. All the clothes I wear, all the equipment that I have, the food that I eat, the gas that I put in my car, anything and everything that can be ran with credit, that can be paid with credit, is going to get paid by someone else's money, OPM, other people's money. In this case, the bank's money. So before I use my worthless piece of trash and pay for my bills, I'm going to go get more worthless pieces of trash. But the difference between this worthless piece of trash and this worthless currency credit, this actually pays me money. That's the difference. So it pays me money on top of the money I just got paid from providing value in the marketplace by serving my purpose and operating and walking in my purpose. Okay. So I'm going to get roughly 2 to 3% cash back this currency, worthless, but it's 2 to 3% on all bills that I pay through this credit card and I get cash back rewards. So CB, cash back rewards. Then within 30 days or so, this card will be due. I'm going to get a due date. That business checking account we'll pay that credit card. End of that system right there. Pretty straightforward. That is a simple velocity banking move right there. 
It's a little hybrid, I call it velocity. It's like debt snowball 2.0, right? If you're on the debt snowball side, typically you are afraid of credit. I'm showing you how to have no fear against something that has no value. If something has no value, why should I fear it? If it has no value, why should I fear it? If I am a spiritual, physical, emotional, unique being, I'm operating on planet Earth, okay? And I have authority and dominion over everything and everything, everything and anything that creepeth the Earth, got it? Pretty much. So, that's the business checking, that's the business credit card, I'm getting 2 to 3% on a monthly basis coming back to me. Money that I'm going to spend no matter what. Okay, So that's how that operation will work. Now, as a business owner, as an S corporation, okay, let's write that. As an S corp, I pay myself, right? My business pays Denzel a salary. All right? So now the money's moving some more. So it's moving here, it's moving here. I'm putting it to use multiple times so that I can get multiple things done with the same dollars, work more effectively, okay? So the S Corp pays Denzel, goes to his personal checking account. The minute it lands in that personal checking account, Denzel then funds his own private banking system. The public banking systems that we all operate under, Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, TD Bank, all credit unions, private credit unions, okay, national, nationwide, federal banks all over the country, all over the world. One of the most profitable businesses there is, okay, a bank is simply a place where you rest money. That's all it does. Yet it charges us so much over time to operate in. So, and that bank does what's called fractional reserve lending, where they take your dollars that lands in your business checking, your personal checking, and they go multiply that money nine to 20 times over. And then they cause recessions. The cause and effect is people end up what? Over leveraging themselves, going into debt. If you're in debt, you now owe institutions and lenders money and you're paying them worthless pieces of trash and it feels like it takes forever to get out of debt. Why? Because the money's not worth anything. It's it has a silent tax called inflation and then an actual tax called tax. So you're getting smacked twice, right? And then you're trying to pay a debt that's charging you interest on top of that debt. So you're getting smacked three times. Not fun, okay? So to get out of that system, to extract myself out of the matrix here, so to speak, I establish my own private banking system. There's many marketing terms and terminology to it. Me, I like the term infinite banking, okay? But really what we're talking about is that debt tool I mentioned, cash value life insurance. So we got three locations already. $30,000 a month, roughly more, will land here first. It'll then pay a credit card bill because I'm running bills for the business. It will then get moved to a personal checking account which then personally funds my own private banking system, 70,000 a year, where I'm going to earn four to 6% roughly, give or take, gross, four to 6% gross per year, compounded every year, no matter what, guaranteed. And what happens is the money is tax-free. So I got rid of Uncle Sam, in that particular situation with the money that I received for operating in my purpose and walking in my purpose and giving value into the marketplace and getting paid for it, those funds are being moved and extracted out of the matrix into my own kingdom economic system. 
kingdom economic system, okay? So now it's in here, all right? IBC, it lands in the policy. I'm going to earn a rate of return on those worthless dollars, but now I'm not being taxed on those worthless dollars, and I get to stay ahead of inflation, which is roughly 2%. Okay? It's also a way for me to earn money on money I'm going to spend anyways. Okay? So now check this out. This 70000 from the 30 k a month that's coming in moves to the personal checking, then funds the IBC one time a year, one annual payment, 70 k boom. The next step that I do is I take out a loan, okay? And this loan will go to two places. It's either gonna go directly back to the business, right? So I write a loan, right? Then Zell writes a loan to his own company that he owns at an interest rate, okay? To f so I'm funding the business back which then does what? I take that credit from the bank, pays bills, two to three percent rate of return here, four to six percent rate of return here, five percent rate of return back to myself. Money's being used for businesses. Oh, because I have a business, I get these wonderful things called tax write offs, and that gets Uncle Sam off my back and it also solves for inflation, I am operating in a value now versus no value. So I took those dollars and I turned it into value to then go use it and create more value with those same dollars, okay? So it's either gonna go back into the business or it goes right here into the personal checking account. And here's what happens. I do the same thing I did in my business. Credit. I have personal credit, business credit, so I take this credit card on the personal side. What does it do? Pay bills. What do I get? Two to three percent cash back rewards again. So I'm earning two to three percent over here, two to three percent over here, four to six percent over here. Can we keep going? Cool. So look, now we are, we're at Velocity Banking. We got Infinite Banking going. Now we're gonna introduce crypto, all right? And then I'm gonna show you the rest of the things that I got going on. What I'll do is I'll, I'll share with you my, my screen on my phone so that you guys can see how it works. So with my personal checking account, I send money to a platform called crypto.com. There's another platform called coinbase.com. These are the two platforms I'm currently using to obtain value, to obtain a currency that does not lose value. Cryptocurrency, okay? And when my money lands in here, I have two options with crypto.com. I have an option called staking, which is like another word for investing, okay? And I have this ability to put this crypto, convert it back to the standard of measure today, which is this, unfortunately for right now, which is the cash, the US dollar. I can get what's called a crypto card and I'll show you that card so you guys can see it so I'll put it right there for right now so we got a little crypto card and this crypto card will do what pays bills so before I use the worthless piece of trash directly to pay the bill before I do that directly I don't want to directly pay stuff because I lose it I never see it again it's already worthless. So now I'm in the hole by just simply transacting. So what I'm doing essentially is I'm showing you how I transact 
my day to day. So I'm always making money. I have to be always making money or else I'm losing money if I do nothing. That's the unfortunate truth. So after the income comes in, moves from the business to the personal, personal to the IBC policy, out of the IBC policy via a loan to the personal checking account or the business checking account, personal checking account pays money to crypto.com where I will obtain cryptocurrency such as crypto coin, CRO, USDC, which is United States dollar coin, okay? Bitcoin or Ethereum. These are the four cryptocurrencies that I'm obtaining so far. And then the second option is I'm able to obtain a debit card, which converts back to the cash, which I then can use to pay bills. And guess what? I get 3% to 10% cash back rewards on bills, money that I spend already. It's money I was going to spend no matter what. So before that money leaves my economy, my kingdom economic system, before it leaves my kingdom economic system, I make sure that I run it through my kingdom first, through my private bank as much as I can. And I build it up over time. All right. So what I like to do is share you share with you guys my policy so you guys can see that so i just want to show you the debt tool what it actually looks like as you can see my name all that good information right when i started it how much i have in loans i actually have more in loans as of today this is an enforced life insurance illustration based on 2020 dividend scale we're now in 2021 so I'll have an updated video for you in June of 2021 based on that dividend scale and then me having dumped in 210,000, right? So it shows you in my, you know, second policy year here. Shows you how much cash value I have, death benefit, right? It's a seven pay. Okay, this is how much you know, operating cash value I can borrow from right here. Here's the term writer, right? This column right here, there's 2.3 million, then 1.8, 1.4. So essentially my cost of insurance is gonna drop year to year all the way to zero, where I won't need it anymore. Then it'll just be pure uh, base premium plus pure PUA afterwards. And I can fund it for as long as I want till I die without becoming a mech. Notice right here, current status, not a mech. Very good. We want to make sure that stays, not a mech, all throughout those seven years. Very, very important. Okay, importante. All right. All right, you guys can see my screen. We're going to open the crypto app. All right, so it's called crypto.com, just so you see. You go to the app store, download it. That's how it looks like. So let me show you, you click on this button right here, that, that main button, and we're going to go to earn. All right, we're going to go to earn. And so on this app, they give you the ability to earn money, earn a rate of return higher than what, what most banks would offer. Right. So as you can see, all the different options. So we're going to go right to. Let's just look if I wanted to put money in, I'm going to hit that plus button. We'll click the first one, crypto.com coin. It's an exclusive coin on this app that you buy and you can use it and do different things with it. OK. So I'm just going to let you know up front. 25 years old, I'm no expert. I'm no expert, okay? I just know a few things about a few things. I apply those few things on a daily basis. I apply kingdom principles behind it all. I pray on it. 
I give, I receive wisdom and knowledge and information, then I execute on that wisdom, knowledge, and information. That's all I'm doing. Okay? So here I have the option. It says, hey, you can, uh, you know, earn a rate of return on your crypto coin. 2% flexible. I can withdraw at any time. Or I can do a one-month term where I lock up the currency. That means I can't touch it for 30 days and earn 4%. Or I can do a three-month term, 6% rate of return for the whole entire year, right? And it's pretty simple. Just hit continue, say I agree, all this stuff, and then you get to deposit however much crypto coin you want, all right? Let's look at Ethereum, same thing, 3.5, 4.5, 5.5. .5. Bitcoin, you can do 2%, 4.5, 6.5. And then this USD is a little more interesting. They're an 8% on a monthly. That's pretty insane. I don't know any bank, any savings account, any checking account, any money market account, any CD, any bond that's giving me 8% on US dollar. I don't know. Okay. So what do we got? 8%, 10%, 12% option. Boom. There you go. And then we can see the different things that I'm staking. So I got some flexible stuff going on here in case I want to pull out at any given time. I got three month terms on the Ethereum, the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin on the one month, one month, three month, three month, just playing around here, you know? And then I got the three month term on the USD. This is money, ladies and gentlemen. This is money. If you see the total balance, right? The 19K, this is money I'm not touching. I'm not even going to use. I'm just simply trying to obtain value with my dollars. That's it. Value. Just trying to obtain value. So let's come back to the board here. All right. So we got money that comes into my economy, hits my kingdom, lands into the business checking account, moves to the personal checking, pays me a salary, business checking, got the credit card, which pays the bills, right? Personal checking, got the credit card that pays the bills. 2 to 3% here, 2 to 3% here, 4 to 6% here on the, on the uh, cash value, my own private bank. Okay, gross, gross, not net. Gross, 4 to 6. Okay, my net's probably 3 to 4, maybe 5 in some cases. So as soon as the money lands into the, the private bank, I got to put it to work. I can't just let it sit there and do nothing. I got to put it to work. So I take a loan out against the money where there's no borrowing cost on my end, I send the money back to the business, charge myself an interest rate, or keep it in the personal. Personal, pays crypto, and I earn all these rates of returns. This is all savings dollars. Money that I'm saving, or money that I invest, or money that I give, right? I'm just trying to make the money operate a little bit better, okay? Some other things, now notice, it's the same 70 grand. It's the same 70,000. 70,000 landed to the business checking account, got sent here, that's one use. Got sent here to IBC, that's three use. It got borrowed out, back to the personal checking, the business checking, four use. Then gets sent to crypto, five use. Then gets sent to credit cards, six uses. Same dollars, over and over and over. It's the same dollar, same dollar. I'm just multiplying it, one, two, three, four, right? And I'm getting so many more things with it, right? So those same dollars is earning money over here, it's earning money over here, it's earning money over there. Whoa, what's going on, right? Nothing crazy, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Take some time to implement. Watch this video 10 times over, write it down. Over time, you'll be able to implement it. The key thing first is to get a grip on this. This is the main, this is your machine, okay? So if your cash flow is not hot and your income's not high, I would just throw everything that I'm saying out the door. It doesn't make sense to even implement any of this if you don't have the machine to fund it. You need the machine. What's the machine? It's you. It's the value that you bring into the marketplace where you serve your purpose and your will, uh, God's will here on earth, right? until you're called back to the homeland, all right? Until then, 
How do you bring value to the marketplace? How can you get out of bad debt into good paying debt that pays you money? How can you exchange the worthless pieces of dollars that you're getting paid for your time and then convert it into assets in the beginning? Okay, before I started all this stuff, the, the return of value was me. I had to invest in me. I had to build the system up. So I don't want you guys to get all hyped up on this. This is great for people who are debt free, people who are debt leveraged, people who understand their four major numbers, people who spend less than what they make, people who are cash flowing nicely, people that have a business, people that have a mission, a vision, a goal, a direction. This works great. If you have no direction, if you do not know your purpose in life, if you do not know where you're going, who you are, why you're here, if you do not know your creator, your kingdom provider, if you do not know that you're a king or a queen, we got to work on you first, the system, the process. We got to work on that, okay? And then we implement this because it just gets better. So in addition to this crypto stuff, because, you know, I just don't know enough for right now. But what I do know is that I, I know 12% makes more sense than zero. I know 6% makes more sense than zero. 6.5, 5.5, it makes more sense than zero, than no value, right? So in addition, I got these other little cute things going on. I got the health savings account, principal put in so far, 7,050. Here is my today's value in that account, $9,440.85. Okay, gold, another store of value. Put 6,000 in, I'm not sure how much it's worth now, I haven't looked at it really. Same thing with silver, put about 3,000 into silver when it was like $12 an ounce and now it's, you know, I think a little bit higher than that, so it's doing pretty good. Stocks, okay, another store of value, 6,000 in the stocks, today's value, 9,228.43. Roth IRA, 6,500 went in, I think think it's at 7k after I didn't check before I started the video but just notice how it's the same dollars add all that up I, I dare you add 65 plus 6 3 let's do it together what am I doing playing games with you add it so 70k pay attention right 6500 principal 6k stocks principal 3000 silver principal gold Principal, the HSA, principal. What did we see in the crypto account? Nine, 19,000, 19.6, but actually it's a lot less. It's a lot less, but we'll add that anyways. That's just a growth in the account, but we'll add it anyway. So 47,550, okay? In reality, it's like 40K because when I put the amount of money that I want to put into a policy, my rule is I typically will not borrow more than 66% of what's available in cash value, okay? So day one, my starting cash value is right around 60,000. 60,000 times 66% is $39,600, wonderful. So I took out a loan for $40,000 that same money, that 40K that people paid me into the marketplace when I serve my purpose is the same 40,000 I'm gonna use to pay bills, ladies and gentlemen, pay to live. And before I pay those bills, I get it into my, into my bank first and then I borrow it out and I get all these rates of returns that makes up for my initial cost of starting the account. So eventually, so in the beginning, I'm in the negative. So let's be very clear. Although you see all this pretty stuff going on, two to three, two to three, four to six, 12, six, 6.5, 5.5. In the beginning, you're negative because 70K goes in, in my case, I only have 
I have 60K in cash value, but then only about 90% of that I can borrow out, okay? But again, my rule is 66% and I might justify going up to 80, but I like to keep reserves just in case, emergencies, things like that. So my leveraging limit is the 66%. So, I, so in reality, 70K goes in, I only have 40K to use, right? It's kind of like how I'm operating. So technically I'm in the negative, right? So in the beginning, it's to make up. But as I run the machine, as I operate it year over year, I then start to profit. That's the whole purpose of an investment, saving, multiplication, right? It, you have to start with one and then you get to two, to, you know, to four, to eight, 16, right? It keeps on going, right? And that's pretty much it for this whole entire situation, how I operate my personal and business finances. This 70 grand is literally money that I'm already going to spend. At some point in time, it's money that's leaving my economy. So before it leaves my economy, I just make sure I put it in assets, put it in things that will eventually pay me money back, get me cash back rewards, points, get away from inflation, get away from tax, so I can keep operating effectively. And guess what I do with all the other cash flow? Guess what I do with all the other cash flow? I then put it back into the machine. Who's the machine? Me. I keep feeding the beast, right? I keep feeding myself. I keep building myself up so I can be a blessing to others, so I can give to others, so I can operate like a king on planet Earth.